Hello everybody, um, sorry for your background noise, my dog is barking, um, right now, some stuff outside and there's a lot of noise, but, um, I'm back again, sorry I took a long break, um, I just, there, there was stuff to upload about, but it's just like, eh, I didn't really want to, but I'm back again, um, we got red flag warnings across the kind of the areas you would expect them to be like Oregon and New Mexico, Colorado, Arizona. We have winter storm warnings and advisories for the Rockies and in the portions of the Central Plains. We have frost advisories into the Tennessee Valley and a winter storm across the Northeast. Currently, uh, if we do end up looking at the radar imagery, we have a strong thunderstorm approaching the Houston Metro with a one inch hail indicator. Actually, two inch. Um, doesn't really have much rotation, so we'll just go to one panel here. Other trailing storms behind it. We're gonna we're gonna really take a deep dive into what's happened over the last few days. Um, and also I'm gonna go show you the tornadoes that have happened over the last several days as well. I don't know how long was last time we did anything on here, but um let's just first dive into what's happened um i think we did this and then i think we actually i think this event here we had 41 wind reports 22 hail 3 sig and then the next day we had a sig hail event across Texas. i believe this was monday I do take the calendar, yeah, the 12th was Monday. This ended up going 15% significant risk for hail on multiple elevated supercells. And then, Tuesday, we had a relatively small event with scattered large, with isolated large hail and wind gusts. Then yesterday, we had a couple of spots see severe weather. We did have a slight risk yesterday across Louisiana and Texas. We had this area end up getting a surprise supercell, and we had areas of convection up here with a beautiful storm structure on it. Then today, so far, we have had a very large hail event unfold across Texas. It started early, early this morning, right around 8, 9 o'clock over here, probably producing some very, very large hail, 2, 3, 4 inches maybe. Um, we ended up getting a 7070 severe watch issued earlier today. I don't think it's up anymore, but pretty significant watch ended up being issued earlier today. Um, and I do think it ended up verifying. There's not very many reports, though, because uh, these storms really didn't track over that much populated areas until just about a couple hours ago. See all the reports coming in. The largest hail we've had so far is baseball sized. So yeah, well, currently if you look at the environment in place, um, we have uh, surface base cape, it's not there. And it's not there because these thunderstorms are feeding off of what's called most unstable cape, and that's at 1,000 to 2,000, and they're also feeding off a rich layer of low-level moisture at 900 and 820, at 925 and 850 uh, millibars, they're feeding off a lot of rich moisture from the Gulf of Mexico. They're also feeding off effective shear of 60 to 70 knots. And then they're feeding off deep layer shear of 50, 60 knots. So that's going to favor um, some supercell storm modes. Um, let's take a look at what the HRRR shows on Call of Duty page because it's going to load a bit faster. Here's the 18Z HRRR run. For a while now, it's been showing the, uh, it showed a pretty significant little line segment thing, but it ended up not showing it with the newest run. Shows a couple supercells erupting in Mexico overnight. Then it ends up showing uh, tomorrow morning. This is right around 12 or so. 12Z. It looks like we get some isolated hailers. I do think there's going to be a very major problem with flash flooding tomorrow across Louisiana. And we might even see a slight risk over this area for maybe wind or hail. Um, but flash flooding is going to become a problem with those thunderstorms. And then the next day, uh, if we move over to Florida, Florida's probably going to be getting some severe weather too, maybe a slight risk again. Um, so let's just check over Florida briefly. Looks like Florida's going to get some thunderstorms Friday, kind of tomorrow afternoon and the morning hours. I do think a slight is possible. I don't actually, wait, did they actually remove the risk? They ended up being a little bit uh, weird and removed the Florida risk, which is... Very interesting. 
Uh, I do think the marginal is going to get expanded, kind of like something like that. And I do think there's going to be a new marginal in place across this area. Don't know why Moisure removed it, but we'll see. And Saturday, it looks like we have another area, or another day to watch. Maybe some elevated supercells. Uh, Storm prediction sensor went marginal, or mainly a wind and hail threat. Um, they do do they do mention a few a potential for some supercell activity though. We'll look at the rat model on Call of Duty page just to get a gist of what's going to be happening across the southeast. We will be taking soundings too, just to see what happens. This is going to be a pretty deep dive in. And before I get too ahead of myself, so here are the confirmed tornadoes so far that we've had in April. I don't know if I've went over this yet. If I have, I have. April 11th, we actually ended up having a couple tornadoes across Florida. I think I remember going over most of this stuff for South Carolina and North Carolina. If I remember right, if I didn't, I'm sorry, but there were several tornadoes across those areas. Including Florida, South Carolina, North Carolina. You get the gist of it. Most of them being weak too. Here's a sounding. This is going to mainly only support hail because if you look at it, it has no surface rooted uh, cape. So that's going to be feeding off of the most unstable cape and that rich layer of moisture. Something similar to what we've had today and those storms have still produced very large hail. So you can't rule out an isolated instance of two plus inch hail or something like that like we've had today. Same thing again with that sounding. Now these soundings do not have as much of impressive middle level lap storage. It's just why the threat is more marginal today. But yeah, you can see that surface-based cape really only gets up to maybe south-central Louisiana. But if you end up looking at that mixed-layer cape, it's going to get up a bit farther to the north. See here, it, the mixed-layer cape goes a bit further to the north. I do think Florida I do think Florida's going to have a severe threat too tomorrow. Um, I'm not making outlooks right now because there's, there's really not anything to really make an outlook over and go in depth about right now. Um, I did make a long-range outlook. I think I saved it into my computer. I'll show you. And I didn't save it into my computer, but I posted it on um, my Discord server that I have that is linked into the kind of like my home area here. But this is going to support me in large hail and damaging wind gusts there. It's enough instability and enough shear. We could probably not going to be any tornadoes with that. It's not. That's not the thing that it's elevated. It's just it doesn't have enough low level shear. It's actually surface based. We might get some good structure out of that sounding. Again, this thing doesn't have that much shear, and it's more crosswise, which is basically a fancy term for being linear. But yeah, that's enough lapse risk to give you a hail and wind threat, but just not enough shear for a tornado threat. And there's looks like a looks like the raft tries to bring up a surface low in central Florida right there, kind of just sits there, and okay that the surface low is gonna provide some tornado potential for day three in Florida. There's two thousand cape in the surface there with mixed layer of a thousand, and then two hundred fifty SRH. This is probably gonna be a mainly localized area though due to the fact that you're gonna have that more localized SRH. Due to the fact that you have, yet again, that wind shear big right there. Yeah, you can see here, 250 helicity. That's pretty decent for the low level, or for the mid-level. That's not that. It's a weak low pressure that develops, but it's there, and that will provide a heightened risk. Again, a little bit higher SRH, but this is more of a hail sounding. So we might see a slight risk upgrade on day three. Who knows? Um, For wind or hail. We'll probably see like a 2% tornado risk, and then... Here it is late that um, evening on Sunday, or Saturday, excuse me. It looks like the more surface-rooted stuff is out here still. Not surface-rooted, but instability. Um, and just an FYI, I'm not sure if I'm going to be uploading too much this weekend. Um, I have, um, I'm going to be very busy with um, other things uh, that I will not discuss right now. But um, looking at this sounding here, not too bad. Mainly wind and hail yet again, though. Uh, let's go to you who a little bit of a deep dive with the GFS here now that we have gone over everything that was needed. Um, I will go over the GEFS after this, and then we have the Euro ensembles pulled up, the Euro lightning maps pulled up, and other stuff like that. So here's the GFS over the next few days. We're just going to do a broad little overview. We're not going to go too in-depth unless I see something that perks my eye. Here's Sunday. 
maybe some isolated showers and thunderstorms from my area, and I don't really want that because I'm busy that day with stuff outside, and I really don't want showers. The GFS is being weird, and it shows a bunch of snow happening for the central United States. This is possible, but I'm not really... What in the carnation is that? Um... It's possible, but not really likely. If that does occur, we might see something in Florida. I'll just take a sounding down there, see what happens. Yet again, that's going to be this is elevated off the surface. So this is going to be more of a wind hail threat again. Probably more of a hail threat than anything. So we might see a bit of a... We might see... We're probably going to see more some localized severe weather events across this area again next week. Like we've had this week. I'm just ready for that late April pattern. We'll get into what happens. This is the ETNZ GFS. I haven't actually taken a look at this because I've been busy with a bunch of schoolwork recently. It ends up developing a surface low out here in the western United States here. That's going to be our next culprit. You see here, we, we do have some thunderstorms with this low pressure system. Um, but this is going to be mainly more of a colder air mass. Maybe some hail. That's about it. Because we're not going to have any surface-based instability. Um, and everything is going to be capped off. So it's going to be mainly elevated convection that develops. But any, anything will ha anything works for me. I haven't seen I haven't seen a good thunderstorm yet this year. I mean, I've seen thunderstorms, but they haven't been spectacular. Okay. This isn't a terrible sounding. But it's capped off at the surface there. Right about... Right here, we have a bit of a capping inversion. Other than that, though, that would have been a decent sounding. Looks like we get a Dixie system to end up perking up. I don't know if this is going to come true or not, but that looks very interesting. Let's just look to see what it has out here. Yeah, mainly wind and hail, not really any surface-based instability with that there. Um, we're not to the fun part yet. The fun part is going to be with this system right here, which we'll get to that in a little bit. So we get a couple, we get dual systems to form. And let's just stop it at, I think this is like 249 or something. It's 246. Let's just stop it right here. Look at our dew points. The gates of heaven from the Gulf of Mexico are opening up to set fire on the central plates. Anywhere around, I would say, let's, let's look at the calendar here. And get my pen over so to where we can actually kind of dissect anywhere oh i guess it won't work but um anywhere this week right here and this week we're really gonna have to watch the week at the 25th um and i don't really know much after and after may 1st yet because that's really far out still and i really i should say we really don't know much past the 22nd but we do, or not much, we don't really know mesoscale details past the 22nd. What we are seeing, though, is trends are picking up on multiple troughs coming in in late April to, like, early May, mid-May. So we're probably going to start to see a more active severe weather pattern again. Now, granted, this is probably going to be taking a bit because this is 240 hours out. So a lot's going to change. But let's just look at the precip again like we did just a little bit ago. You see here, this surface low is going to be our culprit. We move on into the 27th. Yes, I know the date is cursed. Not cursed, but I know it's the 27th, the uh, 10th anniversary of the super outbreak. But we have a warm sector set up in a way that would give off potential for severe weather. Surface-based cape values, they're not the highest. Earlier today, we had runs that were showing stuff like this. I'm like, what is it, 240? We were showing runs. Yeah, we're showing runs that were showing stuff like that. Um, And if you end up looking at the sin, I'm just going to cherry pick a sounding in southeast Oklahoma. And just, boom, stuff like that. That is uh, very interesting. Now, of course, that is a couple of runs ago. But you get the point. Now, the GFS is not as... The GFS doesn't really show that as bad anymore. It shows it being further south. We don't know mesoscale details yet. It could really easily change. It could really easily go away. We don't know. Basically, what I'm trying to say here is that this is far out. A lot of stuff's going to change. But 18 ZGFS run, 
shows some potential for severe weather across the central plains. If you look into the next day, Wednesday, hmm, maybe something across like Oklahoma. It's a bit capped, but you, you, we, it's really far out to really get the gist of anything. Uh, that would be interesting. This is 342 hours out, but that's a large warm sector out play. Let's just look at the surface base cape. Hmm, not that much, but Oklahoma could be a target, I see. If this were to play out, and uh, never mind. There's not much here. But you get the point. It looks like we're going to see something in late April. We'll see. The GFS has been a little bit more harassed. Resulted on that. Let's just look at the Euro and the Canadian. Let's look at both of these. Let's just see what happens at the end of the runs here. And a lot can change from now. So the Euro actually is picking up the same idea with the GFS and showing a winter storm. What is this? Is that a trail of supercells from frickin' Florida? Let me just take a sounding into Florida. What the? <laughs> Gee, it's Euro. <laughs> That's just a trail of strong thunderstorms there at 12 in the morning. That actually could be a pretty interesting environment down there in Florida. We're really going to have to watch Florida over next week. And maybe even the Carolinas if this low comes into play. Because that could be a severe weather maker. Who knows? Mm, temperatures aren't really that great. Looks like the Gulf Coast again. Then a new flow forms. This is when pattern kind of gets like unpredictable. Let's just look at the GDPS. Sorry if you hear that. Um, that's a car. That's a Mustang. Um, but looking at pattern here, the okay. That's we're gonna stop right here. And we're gonna really look in depth about that. Okay, that's a severe weather look for the South. How much Kate? looking at if this would occur 500 a thousand that's enough depending upon the subnoptic environment that would be enough for tornadic activity severe activity sorry i'm taking sound in the middle of rain there yeah i'm not really sure about that one holy cow my dogs are barking loudly sorry if you can hear that um that's not terrible it's very moist very crosswise so it would be a more of a linear threat yeah very interesting, though. And another another storm forms up, too, at the end of the run. Um, let's look at the... There's really not much to look at the instantaneous flash rate. But we're gonna just play it out, I think. Can you... Oh, yeah, you can play it up here. Like I was saying earlier, um, let's look at the GFS flash right here, and yeah, you can see pretty, uh, pretty interesting. It looks like a bunch of Boeing segments at the last hour there. Might be a wind or not might be, would be a wind risk across Florida. Just look there. Florida looks like you're gonna get slammed over the next few weeks. This frame just, this frame just, 18, <laughs> this frame just gives me out, man. 12z2. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, looks like Florida's gonna get slammed over the next couple of weeks until we get into that pattern switch here. Um, let's just look at the 500 Cape probabilities. Not 1,000. We'll do 1,000 Cape probabilities. I'm gonna guess it's gonna be hugged to Florida. Yep, it's been hu it's hugged to Florida. Then right about here, we start to see a shirts back up into the United States. Maybe a Dixie event. Then this is when I think we might see a Plains event. We'll see. Now, these probabilities are low because it is far out. But looking at the grand scheme of things, we could definitely see a Plains Midwest event with this. Um, very interesting to see how the models go. Let's just look at models 1 through 25 here. Let's just let's see what these show. Look, Tuesday, April 27th. So, a lot of them are agreeing on that um, instability getting up into the Midwest of planes. Let's just take a look at 26 through 50. 
Not a lot of these are green. There's only a few of them. So that's interesting. Cape props for 500 are there, too. Let's look at the 500 mm bar wind. Look at the height. Wait. Look at the 500 mm bar anomaly here. Kind of uncertain that far out to see what the anomaly would be. Um, upper air wind, 500 knot, 500 mm bar, perfect. Um, yeah, they're looking at potentially a surface trough here. Um, let's look at the CFS, uh, long range CFS, um, if I can find it, monthly. Um, we're only going to be literally looking at a, a few frames here. So this is what it shows for May. Don't take this for granted. This will change, just an FYI, so I can get that out of the way. Um, but it shows something over, like, the Midwest, and then June looks wet across the south if this were to verify. Um, not temp. Um, temp anomaly, no, not that. Is it this? Yeah, it's this. Maybe, 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 we'll see what happens, but it looks pretty warm. Um, let's look at the GEFS now. Um, just kind of wrap it up. Um, we'll look at the, uh, K-Probs for a thousand here. So yeah, it's probably, it's gonna be looking like it's gonna be hugged to Florida, and then we start to see the gates of heaven open up. Boom. The planes start to get lit up there. Texas has already a 50% chance of seeing a lot of instability. Wow. That's very interesting, the models on, some models are agreeing with that. It's far out though, so this will change. This is the mean series on deposit. Um, looks like Florida is going to be getting a few events over the next couple of weeks, and then we start to see Texas open up. Dixie may be getting an event, and the Plains could be getting an event, Midwest, again, Dixie Alley under the gun. Looks like anywhere, I'm going to draw a large area because this is far out, anywhere, anywhere really in this area theoretically has a shot at severe weather over the next few weeks, and yeah, that includes probably something like that, literally anywhere here because... We don't know where it's going to set up. Maybe even some areas further north could get in on stuff. We'll see. But the pink area, like where I just circled, is probably the area that we could hit the hardest. Not the hardest, but that could get hit. Um, that is going to wrap this one up, though. Um, thank you all for watching. Have a nice night, and see you in the next one.